Hello, dear digital ship friends. Welcome to our webinar on visual analytics, quite a new topic in shipping. You'll hear a discussion on powering your fleet operations with artificially intelligent CCTV very soon. And I'm introducing you to our today's speakers, Osher Perry, CEO and founder of Shipping, and his colleague, business development director, Kevin Brun. All of you watching have an opportunity to ask questions simply by typing them to the Q&A box and we'll, after the, uh, we'll answer them after shipping presentation. And we are starting with our moderator, Carl Jeffrey, founding editor of Digital Ship with uh, a nice conversation. Oh, so what we're going to talk about today is how we're going to use artificial intelligence analysis on shipboard CCTV data. That's closed circuit television. So we're hearing lots of ships these days are being fitted with CCTV cameras. Now, at the moment, companies are mainly putting them on because they're recording video they might want to use later in an instant investigation, or they might want to use it to provide evidence in a dispute, such as to show that something was sampled properly. But there might be useful information on the videos which you can use to improve your ship operations. But if you've got the CCTV cameras, you'll probably get thousands of hours of video every month or maybe millions if you've got a whole fleet and it's probably not practical to employ a person to watch it all. But technology for analysing video data has been steadily improving and now we're at the point where we might be able to get some value from it. So the question is, what useful information can a computer extract from the video using today's AI and computer vision capability? So perhaps it can help you answer questions like this. Are the crew performing mooring operations safely? Is the bridge undermanned or even unmanned at any time? How often are we having unplanned stoppages in cargo operations? Have we done the maintenance or inspection processes as we plan to do them? Is there any uh, issues when the vessels and cargo are going through parts of the world with a high security risk? So. We're going to hear about ways we can do this today from Shipin, which is a company based in Boston with offices in Singapore, Tel Aviv, Cyprus and Berlin. Shipin was founded by Osha Perry, who's a former lieutenant commander with the largest vessel in the Israeli Navy. That's a role roughly equivalent to chief officer. The chief scientist, David Michael, has over 70 US patents in AI and computer vision applications. And our main presentation today is from Kevin Brun, who's director Europe, Middle East and Africa with Shipping, based in Berlin. He's former head of business development and innovation for Ship Ecosystem with DMVGL. And Osha Perry is going to join us for the Q&A and may also be able to answer questions in uh, typing if you want to enter them during the session um, in the Q&A box. But uh, I'd like to invite Kevin to start the talk. Cheers. And thank you all for joining today. Uh, good afternoon for those of you in Europe. Good morning to America and good evening in, in Asia. Thanks for taking the time to join. Uh, we are Shipin, and um, today we'll be speaking about how to power your fleet operations with artificially intelligent CCTV. Um, Carl gave wonderful introductions. Thank you for that. My name is Kevin Brunn. Um, I'm basically a maritime background in digital solutions, helping clients with their digital transformation, particularly in the field of uh, fleet management solutions and fleet analytics. And I'm joined today by Osha Perry, uh, founder and CEO. Osha. Thank you. And it's uh, good to have everybody on the call today. Uh, so Osha Perry, uh, based out of our headquarters in Boston, uh, and as um, we mentioned, we has their offices to ship in around uh, the world to support the, the uh, uh, our customers and the vessels wherever they are. Uh, Chief Officer of the largest Israeli Navy vessel, um, total of 10 years spent at sea, and then about uh, eight years in technology through investments and then additional technology companies that we've built uh, with industrial applications. And after about uh, two decades doing uh, the two of them, uh, I we decided to kind of decided to put them together and focus on uh, delivering solutions on the operation side that would help the maritime industry, kind of marrying the 10 years at sea and the, the eight years with uh, tech development. Uh, we founded uh, two co-founders to the company, uh, myself and the CTO, uh, Ilana Slavsky, uh, uh, who's also based here in Boston. We founded the company about three and a half years ago, and today we will uh, share with you uh, what the company is uh, is uh, developing and delivering to the market, uh, which is uh, very innovative and uh, very helpful, we believe. So uh, thank you again for taking the time to join us.
So, right. The question today uh, is really how can these advanced technologies, such as AI and computer vision that we're applying, contribute to safety, security, productivity, and profitability? Uh, we see that CCTV adoption is on the rise. Uh, mostly it's uh, just used in the case of evidence, for example, um, in an incident investigation or, or in claims management or claims disputes. Um, some other motivations are to encourage the crew uh, for compliance with safety procedures, also for the ship owners and themselves to have a bit more peace of mind. And we're seeing more and more, it's even a requirement by charterers to have CCTV cameras installed on board the vessel. Now, the problem is that most of today's CCTV systems are basically just used as a post-mortem analysis and are not really used proactively. We observe that vessels may have anywhere from five to 35 cameras installed or even more sometimes. So if we take the example of 15 cameras, each camera is recording 720 hours of video per month, which is amounting to over 10,000 hours of video per vessel per month. Now, how big is your fleet and how many hours of video are you really amassing? Uh, in some cases, it may be half a million or even over 1 million hours of recorded video footage per month. Now, this is simply overwhelming. No human eye can, can process all of this recorded video. Um, and even trying to, to use it to look back in time to find a sequence pertaining to a security incident or a damage is like finding a, a needle in a haystack. So it's really impossible to use this proactively. And this is really the AI powered advantage because there are existing digital innovations. These AI and computer vision technologies available to unlock much greater value from this recorded footage. Um, so then we're able to really use this to overcome challenges, to increase safety and efficiency and productivity, to drive continuous improvement, to drive cost savings. Um, the artificial intelligence is able to analyze the video and automatically detect events of relevance happening on board in real time. I can send alerts out to vessel crew and to onshore staff, um, can enable real-time communication from ship to shore, um, providing visibility of what's going on on board to the teams ashore, and uh, can offer analytics that can be used to drive continuous improvement across the whole fleet. We said the system can automatically detect events of relevance. So these could be, for example, unsafe acts and conditions or anomalies in behavior. For example, are watchkeepers alert? Or are they distracted? Are they sleeping? Uh, is PPE being used properly or in the times that it should be? And detecting general hazards and risks. The technology can detect routine activities as well as the absence of planned or routine activities. So a safety or an equipment inspection, has it taken place or not, two blocks meetings, unattended bridge or uh, watch keeping in general. The system can detect security risks um, such as watercrafts approaching, a uh, breach of a vessel, piracy, drug smuggling, uh, breach of containers, for example. And the system can also help detect compliance with your defined policies and procedures uh, to highlight proper maintenance um, activities in their actual performance versus planned, the correct operation of equipment um, and correct watch keeping. So let's take a look now how this technology works. Um, obviously the basis of this is to 
capture the video. And we do this, as we said, by having CCTV and cameras installed at key locations around the vessel. Next, all of the recorded video is being analyzed by the server on board, running the AI and computer vision components. So every minute of every hour of the 10,000 or more hours of video captured is being analyzed in real time by the system and events of relevance are being detected. Let's take a look at an example. We have a camera installed here in the steering gear room, which is capturing video of an engineer performing a maintenance repair activity, installing a pump. We can also see there's been some water ingress around the steering gear. The system, of course, is analyzing this in real time as it occurs, as the video is being captured and detecting, for example, the, the event, the maintenance activity taking place, uh, detecting the usage of PPE, detecting the condition of the asset, in this case, observing the ingress of water. All of these detections and events that the system finds are being portrayed in dashboards, both onshore and on board the vessel. So all of this information is being available to the crew and the onshore team at the same time. Everybody's on the same page um, and can be alerted in a timely manner as to any risks or hazards or anomalies. There's a seamless uh, collaboration enabled by communicating all of the events as well as the video surrounding the events from ship to shore. Not only the event and the video, but data which can provide context to the event is also used and portrayed in the dashboard. So for example, the detections can be merged with AIS data, with weather data, or any other external data sources to provide more context to what's being observed. We'll take a look here at an example of how a, how a detection is taking place. The system here is observing the engine room. The system is trained to know where it is, of course, in the engine room and what it's looking at. In this case, uh, the engine itself and each of the cylinders. So these blue squares that you're seeing are, are just for help in explaining right now. It's not really a part of the video, but the system is detecting each individual cylinder as well as the person, of course, his head, arms, shoulders, hands, face, and the way that the person interacts with the equipment. The system is also detecting the spaces in which the person is moving the corridor, the stairs uh, can also detect the frequency of activity, um, the duration of activity, also an absence of activity or a stoppage in activity. There's loads of data then being logged here in the background and all of this log data is then being made available in the dashboards. Um, dashboards showing alerts, but dashboards also being used to evaluate and review situations that have happened. So this is allowing all parties involved, both onshore and on board, to have much greater visibility of the operations on board, um, allowing them to increase safety and security, to use the alerts proactively, to ensure safer navigation. And it's also a means to improve operating efficiency with the analytics and the greater insights provided. Um, this then allows you to drive your continuous improvement initiatives uh, across your whole fleet. So again, we see the dashboard here. We'll have a look at uh, some examples. In this case, the system is showing a hazard or a risk. Uh, that's why it's alert in a red coloration. Um, the system is monitoring the perimeter of the vessel here. We see a watercraft approaching from the aft uh, in the video in the bottom right corner. Mixing with additional data sources, such as the position of the vessel and the fact that uh, this watercraft is not emitting any AIS signal, the system can detect this as a clear uh, security risk and portray this 
in real time in the dashboard for both the onshore and onboard crew to see. In a similar example, um, in this case, in the bottom right again, you see the system is uh, looking at bridge activity. It's able to determine how many people are in the bridge and compare this with your policies or procedure, how many people should be on the bridge at daytime, at nighttime, in congested waterways, in open sea passages, uh, or during heavy weather, compare this with your policies and provide alerts as necessary. In this particular example, we know the vessel is uh, close to land and has received a pilot vessel as well and the pilot on board. So this is a normal pilotage operation taking place. You can imagine how much data is actually being collected then and stored by the system uh, and being presented to you in the form of reports and analytics. Uh, these can be used as summaries of notable events that have happened uh, in a period in the last week, in the last month, as well as metrics uh, concerning safety, concerning maintenance performance, concerning navigation, um, as well as how efficient are your cargo operations? Um, how much time do you spend before, during, and after cargo operations? Do you have unplanned stoppages? Are you more efficient at certain terminals, certain parts of the world than at other terminals? which vessels may be performing better than other vessels. So allowing you to do also some fleet benchmarking, identifying the high performing vessels in the fleet, what are they doing right? And being able to share this as best practice across your fleet to drive continuous improvement. So this is really the AI powered CCT advantage. It's giving you much more than just having cameras installed on board, giving you the automatic detec detection of events of relevance, uh, providing alerts uh, in the case of risks and anomalies, giving you the ability to analyze your operations, to optimize and improve them as well, uh, with some additional benefits mixed in, such as automatic checking of the health of the system. Is it online or the cameras? Uh, in the correct angles, um, improving your operations in general. We get actually a lot of questions, and I'm sure you're thinking the same thing as you're watching and listening right now, uh, questions about the seafarers themselves, and what do the seafarers think of this? How do they like this system? Um, We've had actually very good responses from the market and from the vessels and the crew on board. Um, we find that the crew really likes having the visibility of their complete vessel, especially when we're talking about very large vessels, which are becoming more common nowadays, of course. Um, the crew are able to have complete visibility of the whole vessel. Um, and we know also that in many cases, the crew is First, in the line of fire, in the cases of, let's say, damages or incidents, having such a system is, again, a security for them that they are not to blame for things that happen. Uh, we've had actually some good experience with uh, a client who performed a survey of their fleet before adopting the system. And of 40 ships in their survey, 39 of the ships were clearly and strongly in favor of using the system. So we want to look at this in more detail. How do the users use it? How does the crew on board use the system? And how do fleet management teams ashore use the system? Because we know that fleet management is still very much a, a black box. It's, um, especially for the onshore teams, it's, it's hard to know what's going on on board. And, uh, it's hard really to know what you don't know and what you're missing. Um, of course, the great benefit in finding out root causes, uh, what exactly happened, why did it happen, and how did it happen. Of course, this is useful then for ensuring that it never happens again. Uh, but also questions that can help you improve your operations in general, like how effective are new procedures that have been put into place? 
Um, how are they being complied with on board the vessels? Uh, all vessels, some vessels, are they performing better or worse? How often do you have unplanned stoppages during your cargo operations? Um, has maintenance or have inspections taken place as planned? And what about your equipment and machinery? Um, for example, cranes, are they being properly lubricated? Are they being properly maintained and operated? Uh, is your bridge undermanned or maybe unmanned at certain times? Are the officers on watch alert or are they perhaps distracted uh, looking at a mobile phone? Is the crew performing their daily operations safely? Um, these and many, many more questions uh, can be answered by using the system. So we'll look now at actually how clients are using this. Here's one use case. The topic of this is generally ensuring compliance with procedures. It's about discovering improvement areas and driving continuous improvement. In this particular case, uh, it was a tanker operator who was looking to improve their bridge behavior. Uh, they had experienced previously some incidents due to this, and they were looking for a system to enhance proactive bridge behavior. Immediately after deploying the system, um, there were actually lapses in the watchkeeping practices detected. The master, of course, was alerted to this and could promptly rectify the situation on board his vessel. He was able then to discuss this with the bridge team ashore. The company could share the lessons learned with the fleet. And in the following month, the system documented then 100% effectiveness of these corrective actions taken. Another example, in this case, the topic here is about security and piracy or narco piracy. It's about mitigating risk and liability, as well as timely and easy reporting to authorities, having the right information at the right time. Um, in this case, it was a, an operator of uh, container vessels who frequently trade in high-risk geographical areas. They've frequently experienced narco pirates attempting to board the vessel, um, then on board to open containers, stow drugs, and then even replace the seals. Of course, if such a breach is, is not reported by the vessel or the operator to the authorities, uh, the vessel can be held liable. So in this case, the system was able to detect any suspicious watercraft approaching, it's able to detect if these unauthorized persons come aboard, able to detect even which container was breached. And the master through the alerts is aware as well as the onshore uh, fleet operations center is, is aware, can easily report to the authorities. Um, they know exactly what occurred when and even which containers were affected. And an example here of driving continuous improvement about compliance with procedures um, and performing internal or onshore or onboard safety audits. It could be that a safety manager ashore or even a master when he comes on board the vessel for his assignment may want to perform a mini audit of operations. So a safety manager ashore for example, wants to initiate a safety campaign surrounding mooring safety and mooring operations. Um, from ashore, he can perform a remote audit of the fleet and see how well the mooring operations are being performed. For example, are they being performed safely? Uh, is proper PPE being used? Are there trip hazards? Uh, are the snapback zones clear? He can view statistics on safety performance for the fleet, as well as viewing all the video surrounding any mooring operation for any vessel in the fleet in the last month, in the last three months. Um, in the case of any anomalies or training needs exposed, 
can then, of course, initiate corrective actions. And in the follow-up, the next month or several months, the system can document the effectiveness of these corrective actions. And finally, the last example um, using this system uh, for greater insights, for greater visibility on board of the onboard operations, and being able to identify weaknesses, uh, being able then to optimize the operations. So increasing the availability of the, availability of the vessel, which in turn means more revenue potential. In this case, it was a global tanker operator who wanted to improve efficiency of their operations and increase their competitive advantage. They were having trouble finding the process inefficiencies and to identify the bottlenecks prior to using the, assist, the system. Upon implementation of the system, they're then able to collect the data they need to benchmark the vessel and the terminal performance to determine the root cause of the process inefficiencies, um, to identify unplanned stoppages and anomalies in operations, and to use this information to op optimize their operations. The result was 14% less time in port, 17% reduction in tank cleaning, and uh, this translated into several hundred thousands of dollars in monetary benefit. So indeed, it is possible by using advanced technologies to improve the bottom line as well. Uh, by reducing incidents and reducing loss, by increasing the vessel availability, increasing the sea days available for the vessel to earn revenue, um, by delivering unprecedented visibility of what's going on on board the vessel and using this to optimize and we find now even going towards the direction of having a positive impact on the insurance premiums. The team behind ShipIn, um, Carl uh, gave a brief introduction. Uh, it is consisting of people with strong maritime background as well as strong tech competence. Um, Carl mentioned some of our team already, our chief scientist, David Michael holding over 70 patents for computer vision. Um, this mix of competence between uh, maritime competence and tech competence also led to ship in winning the Safety for Sea Technology Award recently. We thank you for your attention and for your interest in how these technologies can help you to optimize your operations. Um, I'm assuming there are many questions at this point. So um, Carl, I guess we'll switch back to you and we can have a look at some of these questions. Well, wow, that sounds fantastic. Yeah, um, and I've got a lot of questions of my own, but uh, if everybody wants to put in uh, questions, we'll go to the Q&A part. I mean, well, one part, I think probably the audience would like to know what you can share about the sort of technology readiness level, what people call it. I mean, you, we said some things before, you mentioned you had some customers, but you couldn't name them. I don't know. I, I think that's probably quite an important thing to add. You have some companies actually using this live now and you're ready for mass adoption or do you want to? Yes. <clears throat> so um, thank you, thank you, Kevin, for the presentation. Um, and thank you, everybody, for uh, the attention here. And we'll, we'll answer the questions you may have. As for the uh, fleet, so the, the system became commercially available the beginning of this year. Uh, we have currently five fleets already uh, using the, the platform, including two publicly traded large companies. Indeed, we're not disclosing the names uh, of the fleets as our customers. We do have we've, uh, one fleet, uh, again, publicly traded that has already deployed on a full fleet deployment, uh, uh, well uh, reputed uh, um, uh, owner. And uh, yeah, we're now in, in conversations across uh, segments. So it's container vessels, uh, uh, tanker uh, uh, vessels, uh, dry bulk, uh, roll on, roll off, uh, et cetera. Okay. And then if, if a company wants to install this, the process is they talk to you and I guess maybe they've got cameras already, maybe they don't. Um, they need to have cameras installed and then you put the server on on some kind of 
subscription basis and try and tune it, etc. Yeah. So Flicked Vision is a software product that gives you that visibility, that seamless collaboration between ship and shore, those alerts on board the vessel for the crew as well as on shore. And it's, as uh, Kevin mentioned, a patented solution on the software side and the communication of the visual information from the ship to shore. When it comes to the installation, so obviously this, we send a server to the vessel to analyze all the information in real time, right? And the sensors, the cameras are, um, if an owner already has CCTV cameras installed within the recent years of the whole IP, and we can look at the, the spec of those, we can send our server and integrate into it. If vessels do not, or ship owners uh, and ship management companies are looking to uh, CCTV solutions, the ShipIn's model provides all equipment, uh, cameras, server, cabling, hubs, switches, all you need, full, full ready for deployment uh, at no capital expenditure. So you sign on the deployment of the software we send kits to the vessels. There are manuals that are prepared by our global support team per vessel specific for the installation. And literally within a couple of weeks, three weeks, you can be live and start um, um, you know, having the ROI on the, the loss prevention, on the improved cargo operations, efficiency and productivity, and have your superintendents on a day-to-day -day work with the vessel. So again, the, the, we've, we've created a... a, a uh, a whole infrastructure behind us that allows us to provide the full kits, including the, all the cameras at no capital expenditure. And it's just a subscription uh, model on the software. On the equipment, shipping carries all responsibility, all warranty uh, all for the lifetime of the product on all of your equipment. So in case, you know, if you, Kevin mentioned, uh, didn't dive much deeper, but we're happy to do so uh, uh, later if anybody's interested. When, when a CCTV is installed, you don't even know if the camera is working, if it's locking down, if a chatter comes to you and says, okay, can you show me what happened here? And so, you know, we, uh, coincidentally, that location was not actually recording or the camera was faulty uh, during that uh, time. That's It's not bad uh, look on the, the reputation of the, the company and the relationship with the charterer. Uh, our system has built in automatic health monitoring that allows you to say, the, the, we know that the camera is not looking at the right direction or is inoperative and the kits already include spare cameras that the crew can actually plug and play. You have continuous operation on board, which you know is critical uh, for the, the, the vessel's activities. And then our team um, sends uh, the replacements uh, to the vessels um, immediately. So we have, as we mentioned, customer support that is available 24 seven and uh, is a click away on our dashboards. You can chat with everybody and receive all the, the guidance you require. Okay, that's great. So just to the audience, if you notice, you can upvote questions because we've got a few questions coming in. And we'll, if, you, if you go to the top right, you can sort by most recent or most upvotes. So if you sort by most upvotes, then we'll uh, go to the ones of the most popular ones first. So Georgios Nanos, who I think is a, a consultant in Hamburg, is asking about data privacy. But I suppose you're not showing this in private parts of the ship, are you? You're showing this in public parts of the ship. So I wouldn't imagine, well, I guess Germany yeah. privacy rules are quite strict, aren't they? <laughs> yeah, so I'll start by saying that we, shipping is compliant with all GDPR constraints. We have fleets around the world, crew around the world uh, from different nationalities. We, this is a, an area of utmost importance to us. As a, as a value and as shipping, what's shipping mission, first and foremost, before we talk about the technicalities of the GDPR. I've sailed for 10 years. We have people that have sailed that have mass, you've been masters of, of tanker vessels that have understand the environment very well. Include, and, and then we join the technology aspect uh, and the experts to our team to develop the solution. So we are seafarers developing solutions for seafarers, right? And the idea here is in terms of how we view it is that, you know, as Kevin mentioned, the ships get bigger. The challenges keep increasing. The crew is not getting any bigger. It's on the contrary, right? And we believe that there are no currently digital tools for the seafarers to do their jobs in a safe and productive way, which is what shipping uh, is doing. So that is on, on a philosophical, on our, our vision of what it is that we're doing. On the technicalities of the GDPR, it is no different than any other CCTV installation. And as you know, such exists for maybe two decades uh, in the industry. So. We, and specifically on the AI component, 
We do not have, it's only in the working area. So you're on deck in the wheelhouse and in the engine room, right? And you have no, there's no facial recognition, no reporting on an individual basis. Uh, right. and this is all part of, and we don't, the, the data is obviously, is the ownership of the ship owner um, and uh, is used as they see fit. Uh, so we are in, in full compliance uh, with the GDPR requirements and regulations. Also, as you come in, as in, we all know, in every other industry around us, uh, there are cameras that exist we, with the kits. Uh, a sticker is sent to the vessel that is then put on the alleyway. This area is uh, operated with fleet vision by shipping and might be recorded for performance improvement and safety. Okay, okay. so we go to Eleni Biniari, who I think is at the University of Peloponnese on her LinkedIn. So she's asking about false alarms. Now, as I understand it, you're not actually making alerts because that'd be quite hard, but you're sort of gathering data. So there's plenty of chance to look at the data later and assess whether or not it's, do you think, or is it a... No, no, so we provide... The system is, is a cutting edge machine learning and artificial intelligence algorithms that provide real time or near real time, depends on the buffering of events on board the vessel. So we provide alerts in real time on what is happening on board. These alerts are provided to the chief office, to the chief uh, uh, engineer, to the captain on board the vessel. And at the same time, right, the videos, the information is seen ashore again in parallel. Right, so we have the patents on how do you take those terabytes and terabytes of data on board the vessel and move them at about 100 megabytes per day to provide full vis continuous visibility from each one of your vessels. Right, so that is real-time analytics, real-time detections and alerting. On top of that, you then have the day-to-day, -day, the superintendents can join the toolbox meetings, can see that the uh, uh, conduct in the bridge with pilots uh, is happening properly, can see how to improve mooring activities uh, and so on, right? And then on the management level, you're able to say across as an owner, you can start seeing how your different technical operators are doing, right? Because you provide the policies. And now for the first time, you actually have the ability to say, okay, these are my top performing vessels. What are the good practices? How do I move it across? Guys, you are a little bit behind. Here are the bottlenecks that you are uh, uh, facing. This is how you can uh, uh, improve them. Our focus and our ability, what we see as the first time in the industry, to provide a system, an operating platform that allows the owners, the managers, the crew sitting on the same platform, seeing the same information at the same time and working on it as if you're working shoulder to shoulder. As one of the owners that works with us recently told us, which, you know, this is what we've designed the system to do. We're, we're very happy about that uh, um, uh, testimony. Um, so last thing I'll say, it's actually outside of the industry. When you talk about performance management, we often talk about, you know, take a hundred million dollar factory and a hundred million dollar vessel and compare the performance management that you have in each of these assets. Obviously, as you can imagine on the factory side, you have the shop floor manager, the plant manager is located on site seeing everything, right? And then he has the, the, the control room with IoT input that gives him full visibility about his production, his efficiency, his unexpected downtime, his root cost analysis, right? And on a $100 million ship, of which ship owners might have not one or five, but 30 or 70 or more, right? You don't have any of that. We still rely on manually entered reports that are sent once a day, and don't actually give us the, the performance management tools that exist today, which is where we come in. And this is why, you know, as Kevin described, you see the economic value quite incredible, right? And this is this economic value of over $400,000 was provided to us by the very first customer that we started serving on the multiple areas. So that is what shipping does. I, I, I took a little bit of time to, to kind of expand on, on uh, uh, just a little bit more about the, the actual answer, but I hope it provides more insight. Oh, very good. Okay, so next we have uh, Ravi Rayo, who I think is from uh, Synergy Marine in uh, Bengalaro, but he's asking about um, when people switch CCTV off. So he's saying that uh, sometimes they switch it off most of the time and sometimes seafarers will switch the CCTV on to sort of catch a colleague out. I think that's what he's saying. But, but I guess this is, a, this is on the basis that the CCTV is running all the time and if the camera was ever turned off, 
that be something to the report to the management, isn't it? Or? So there, there are two things. A, in case uh, CC, the uh, camera is not working or the entire system is not working, within six hours, our team would be able to report to the captain, to the owner, to the manager, that this is the case and help resolve the issue. Um, if there are certain areas in the world that you are not allowed to have the recording of the CCTV still, right? It's uh, it's quite uh, surprising to someone that is outside of the industry, but it's the normal way some uh, ports, unfortunately, are working. Uh, in this case, it, is, it can be done uh, the and, and then reactivated. The system can buffer the activities that have done, and then when the, vessel, the system comes back to, li to life, uh, it will send the continuous information uh, so you'll have the, 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 the information in front of you. Oh, okay. So now we've got uh, Vittorio Lippe, who uh, Google says is a ship broker in, in London, I think, but um, he, or, he or she is asking about infrared cameras. I don't think you're doing infrared cameras. I mean, I guess you could do, but maybe that's another <laughs> level of technology evolution, is it? No, so infrared exists on our on, on our standard uh, kit at a specific quality. It's not the full long distance high resolution uh, infrared capabilities, but we do have those uh, on uh, on uh, you know as the kit that is being sent. There are specific applications that are currently in beta testing and in design phase that require uh, very specific uh, use cases that require the equipment to be of a different model, and we're working with the ship owners on that. The AI application, the machine learning, the rules that you have seen from Kevin's presentation exist also on the infrared and can provide, whether it is even thermal uh, identifications to uh, other, other uh, um, specific uh, data points that you're uh, interested in seeing. Obviously, they're not shared here as they're not commercially available yet, but if you have specific questions, we're happy to answer those. Okay, so Sanju Sasid Harun, who I think is from Tata Consultancy Services in the UK, is asking about using the camera to read gauges. We've had other companies doing this. I guess this is also a different business model that you didn't mention and doesn't sound like you're looking at, but presumably the same technology. Yeah, you we, can... yeah we, we don't, as a, as a, um, what we do is, is not putting cameras in front of gauges to read them. There are other ways to transport this type of data to the, to the owners. Um, I think you know that this is the 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 way the system is working is with the server on board. You can integrate additional, if you want, flow meters, additional data sources into the system and integrate it in each of the detections. Again, as Kevin mentioned, in each one of the alerts that you're seeing that are getting in real time, there are maybe four, five, or six data sources. One of them is the visual. The other is integration of additional data sources to give you the holistic the real story of what is happening, where the vessel is, um, you know, underway or not, what are the weather conditions around it, what other data sources you need to complete that picture. And we're able to integrate that. Uh, we do not work on detecting analog and moving it to, to the shore. That's not uh, in, in our uh, activities, but there are other ways to maybe more efficient to actually uh, give you that visibility. And we're happy to answer more questions specifically. Okay, so now we've got Rob, Mari more, Rob Morris, I think he's with uh, Blue Communications. He's asking about connectivity. Um, you mentioned 100 megabits a day, which sounds like an enormous amount, but maybe it's not if you've got a VSAT connection. But, uh, but he's asking about data analysis in real time, which doesn't actually need connectivity. I guess you're just sending this edge computing model, I suppose. You're just sending to yeah. store what you need to. Yeah, so on most vessels, actually, the 100 megabytes a day is nothing. It's very small uh, compared to the... Um, what is being used from the vessel. The one more thing I will say is that the system, we and we built the system for the maritime industry, understanding that it, one size does not fit all. Um, and the point here is to say different vessels have different communication uh, packages, different systems of communication on board. As a general rule, we sit behind you know, your firewall and we, sit, we use the, ex the existing uh, communication network that you have. And the system is flexible in its ability to adapt to what system you have from the more capacity you have in the bandwidth and the data amount, the more resolution, the more uh, continuity you can receive. But the information, the sharing can be even with a very, very low um, and, and kind of say uh, older or legacy kind of communication systems. And we have both. Oh, wow, okay. So Max van den Berg is performance manager with a split off as a shipping company in the Netherlands. So he's asking about cargo operations. So uh, identifying cargo damages. I'm not sure what kind of shipping split off does, but I mean, if it's chemicals, it must be quite hard to identify 
problems using video cameras, but is there something you want to? Yeah, so cargo operations obviously are always hectic. Uh, a lot of things are happening. Everybody's running around, right? There are a lot of other uh, factors that are coming in. Uh, sometimes the inspector is going on while cranes are moving in the terminal, stevedores are coming in, etc. So this is a very, it's a, it's a sensitive point in time for the vessels. There are a lot of bottlenecks. There are a lot of incidents that are happening during that time. And shipping is certainly there, right? And, and helping the seafarers as well as the team ashore to actually support the crew. So we recently published a case study as one example on a chemical tanker that had a cargo contamination claim brought against it. Within the same day, the owner was able to fend off and kind of show through the information that was available in the system uh, that the fault was actually at the terminal and the procedures were followed uh, on both the vessels uh, properly, on the vessel properly. Uh, this was done, again, with the notification of the crew, the team from the office was able to then intervene and start managing the the, uh, the, the entire process. So that's one thing. On stevedore damages on cranes activities, uh, dry bulk, etc. And we're now coming in into also the, the container aspects. There's a lot of stuff that is happening. Visual detection is part of, uh, it, it's, it's a critical tool today in other kind of industries. We bring those tools into the maritime space and helping uh, generate value as a result of it. Losing, again, reducing the losses and improving the productivity. So the answer is yes. Okay, so so Sanju Satsutaran, my, my colleague Vaid has corrected me, he's actually from uh, MERS, but he's asking the average data size per day exchange. So is this 100 megabits a day? Is that a, a megabytes, I think? was that is that typical? On, on average, um, as a rule of thumb, uh, yeah, and we're not exceeding at any time given point the 20% of the overall bandwidth, um, and again, the system is flexible. But on any given moment, we have tens of terabytes on board the vessel that are processed in real time on the ship and then communicated to you ashore. Uh, that's the average consumption, yes. And uh, so, so George is asking, do you need to have a VSAT connection? I guess you need to be able to take fairly large data volumes to for this to work, don't you? So we will work with whatever communication system you have. VSAT is the standard today, and that's what most car customers have. Happy to have a more in-depth conversation and understand what you currently have and how the system fits your needs. Well, and it doesn't matter what kind of camera you use, does it? Or as, he's also asking. We as mentioned, we provide uh, kits that include every everything you need for the system to work at no capital expenditure, right? It's all warranted, provided by shipping. When it comes to existing equipment on board, we can integrate, and we've done that. We take existing CCTV and plug them into our server. So it's not like just dormant and you hope that it records something, but actually starts giving you value from assets you've already paid, maybe tens of thousands of dollars on, on the on per vessel. So yes, we can integrate as long as this equipment is actually fit as IP cameras, etc. What are the specific sensors? Uh, I'm happy to answer specific questions or Kevin following the conversation, feel free to reach uh, to us and we'll tell you specifically on the equipment that you uh, you currently have. The good news is even if it's not working, then you have you have the network, but the camera itself is kind of older, we then we, you already receive all the cameras at no cost. So you just like unplug and plug the new one and, and um, you turn it on. Oh, well, that sounds great. Well, that, that's, that's the end of the open questions. There's some more questions that uh, Kevin has answered on typing, which um, you might want to, uh, I don't know if you want to add anything to, um, Panos Theodosopoulos from Ocean King is asking about how it, um, well, they're, they're kind of training, as I was also asking about this myself. I mean, how, I, don't, you know, I can't imagine you just supply this thing and automatically works everything out and it has to be trained to the specific ship and what good mooring and bad mooring looks like and They've got to be a kind of learning period, isn't it? Yes. So there's there's existing uh, learning, and we've been developing, as, as we mentioned, we established a company a little bit over three years ago. A lot of the initial detections have been, so initial information has been done based on uh, visual data that we've acquired to train the systems, specifically per vessel, per fleet. Um, there are two. So once we deploy the equipment um, and turn on the system, there is a period of three to four weeks of learning. Yeah, that the system adapts to what are the normal behaviors on board. Uh, and then that is joint with the policies of the owner or the manager to what they would like to see. And then usually within the three to four weeks, we, we, we deem the, the system operational 
uh, and then it works. Now, we have as a, as a fast growing technology provider to the maritime industry, we have a set use cases that are already commercially available, but then there's a much longer list of what is coming up in our roadmap and in the pipeline starting this, the end of the quarter is literally today. And I think by today or tomorrow, there's a few uh, new releases of the system capabilities. Every uh, um, six weeks, there's an update and more uh, um, detections are coming in, more analytics, more reporting uh, is coming in. And for your specific fleets and use cases, we are always happy to receive your interest. What would you like to measure? What would you like to uh, detect? And we will put it in the roadmap and develop it specifically to your to your needs to meet the, your business uh, concerns, which is why we're here. Well, and then there must be this sort of tuning process. I imagine you take a lot of video files from the ship and then work with it in your own office and get this there thing. There's tuning as a new product. There are bugs, um, stuff that you know that is is. Uh, we, we work through. That's uh, the nature of every new software company uh, and new software products. Uh, yes, so the, there, there is tuning. Uh, we, we have the uh, periodic bi-weekly business reviews with our customers. Mm -hmm. We get their feedback. We update the policies. We update the specific detections uh, and continuously improve. It must be tuned for individual clients, I imagine, because if it detects water ingress in one engine room, it doesn't necessarily do water ingress on a different engine room or the, it comes up in a different, slightly different color or different light or isn't it? So it must be a as, as you can imagine, uh, and it might not be a secret, but most fleets deal with very similar concerns, right. very okay. similar uh, risks. So the the common is greater than the, the, the differences. Yeah, okay. Well, we've got a few more minutes. I mean, the whole crew issue, I mean, it's more of a kind of discussion rather than a yes or no thing. I mean, if I was a seafarer watching this, there's something you've said I'd like and some things you've said I wouldn't like when I don't necessarily want a camera checking them on the phone all the time, but I might want something to prove I'm doing something properly. And uh, as you said, you know, it's a subjective record that I've done something well and you need the crew on board. I guess it's, it's, it's quite easy for the for crew to hijack this whole project if they don't like it, I suppose, by <laughs> locking the cameras or looking up. I, mean, I, I think you said that yourselves, that getting the crew on board is something you take very seriously. So well, do, you, is, do you have any more thoughts on this? I mean, how, mm. what, what do you do to explain to crew and make sure they like this and see that it's in their interests and maybe less the, the things that aren't in their interest, do you think? Yeah. So, look, let's talk about the current situation, right? When there is a drug smuggling activity, the crew is immediately being uh, seen as a fault, right? And unfortunately, often are being even sent to prison. Um, when there are navigational errors, in the crew is immediately uh, put at fault. Whereas maintenance issues, uh, the crew is at fault. When there are injuries, what have you done wrong, Why, right? Why have you done that? And the fact is, nobody's waking up in the morning with mal malice kind of intent to get injured or to have something, you know, these are hardworking seafarers that get up and work very, you know, on, on multiple challenges around the vessel and they need the, the digital solutions, those new solutions that are available to do their jobs better. The, from the very first vessels we installed, it was really interesting and honestly quite surprising to us that as I mentioned, the kits include spare cameras. And all of a sudden, we started seeing spare cam additional cameras popping in different locations around the vessel. And then we receive a note from the crew saying, can you please send us more cameras because we would like to install them here, here, and there. And we had a chat about them. So look, we're not there as often. They're, you know, it helps us within the engine uh, control room or we're in the, we need to be able to go on the bridge. We need to be able to, to see that and it helps us, right? And I'll say the future we're moving towards is even creating more automation, more dig you know, digital uh, uh, deployment of solutions for their benefits, reducing their administrative burden and so on. So it is to serve them, and that has been the feedback that we've received from the seafarers, which we're very happy about. The, the flip side on it, very early on, before the product was even commercial, I had a chat in one of the conferences with someone that is a manager now at, uh, at a ship uh, management company, and said, look, you know, I sailed for so many years and I used to go at night on a tanker vessel with a, to have a smoke on the alleyway with flip-flops and not at night. And now I won't be able to do that. And I said, I'm sorry, 
but I'm actually not because you should come home safely, right, to your family, and so it does the rest of the crew, right? And I'm sure your master, the captain of the vessel, would not have approved uh, it or the chief engineer or anybody else, right? So there are certain things that we say it's okay. It's okay to have that cultural change and to have more accountability and more have more, you know, the responsibility of what is okay and what is not okay. Uh, you know, I, I recently read an article from the, uh, the there are two. Um, it's, it's a bit unrelated, but it kind of dawned on me that there was a, a situation in one of the airports that two uh, aircrafts kind of touched each other, and there was a big hoo-ha about it, right? And in the maritime industry, unfortunately, we're not there yet, right? There's still a lot of things that are happening that are not at par in where we need them to be. And we've seen evidence of that, unfortunately, and again, not by fault uh, of, of the, the seafarers, but that can be prevented, can be uh, addressed. Uh, and that's that's why, again, that's why we're here. Yeah, there must be a kind of transitional period when you discuss with the crew what you're doing and explain to them and maybe show them what this thing can see. Is that a... Yeah, yeah no, so the... Crew, go ahead, Kevin. Nowadays, nowadays, a lot of crew are very tech-savvy people, right? Um, and, I mean, we see... You've probably seen, like, on LinkedIn or, or Facebook, whatever, social media, a lot of advertisements nowadays for these... Amazon Go supermarkets in the US, right? These are the ones where there's no workers. Um, you walk in, you put everything into your bag or your pockets and you walk out. Um, it's almost like stealing, but it's not because they're using AI and computer vision. They're using the same technology, right? So the before situation, you walk into a supermarket and there are cameras around I personally would just ignore them, but some customers might say, hmm, okay, there's cameras watching me shop, but there's no value in just a camera. There's no value to the customer, nor there's there, is there value to the shop owner. But when they add the AI components and the computer vision, suddenly the consumer himself has value. His shopping experience is a whole lot easier, right? And it gives value also to the operator of the store. It's the same thing on board the vessel. Once the crew realizes how much value is coming from adding the AI and computer vision technology, how much value they're getting out of the, the information in the dashboards, um, that becomes the focal point and not the fact that there's actually a camera on board. The crew can presumably see what this thing is analyzing, can it? And maybe have a chance to comply, say if they think it's got the wrong idea about something or is it a... Yes, indeed. The, 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 everything is done on board as well, of course, right? And as Kevin mentioned in, the, uh, in one of the case studies on the unattended bridge, right, the, the captain was able to take uh, immediate kind of action and sit with the team and say, this is what needs to happen. We have to improve our ways, right? It is their responsibility, his responsibility to bring the, in the manage uh, a safe and, and productive uh, voyage. So we give them the tools they need. Yeah. Oh, it sounds fantastic. Well, I suppose it's also a sort of vision of the future. It's sort of coming, I guess, whether people like it or not, which is not very nice to say, but I guess that's another way some people will like it. Not everyone will, but uh, you can't stop it, I suppose. If you have it in supermarkets, we're going to have it on ships and the technology is cheap enough to do it. And uh, if, it, it, if, it if it generates $400,000 per vessel per year, why would you stop it? Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's fantastic. Well, we're, we're coming to the end now. I think that's been a great... Uh, so the whole new technology we've never seen before in a digital ship webinar, and I hope it all goes well, and I wish you the best of luck with it. I shall uh, pass back to Vida for the closing words. Cheers. So it Thank was you, our last yeah. webinar this summer. In September, we are bringing you a new series of webinars telling you what's new in maritime technology world. Now Digital Ship is signing off, wishing you a relaxing summer, and we'll see you in autumn. Take mm -hmm. care. Bye. Bye-bye. Oh.